Hello, welcome to The Biblical Perspective, an in-depth expositional study in the Word of God. Hello and welcome to another enlightening presentation of the Biblical Perspective Bible Study. The Bible says in Psalms 119 verse 130, the unfolding of your word gives light. By light it means the word of God gives us enlightenment and understanding. Joining me for this enlightening Bible study in the Word of God is my wife, Minister Gwendolyn Holmes. It's great to have you with us, Minister Holmes. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. All right, let me uh, give you some introductory remarks and uh, we'll get started with our presentation uh, uh, after that. We're in a teaching series currently and the series is called Understanding the Spirit World. A lot of people know about it. They know there's a spirit world. Yes but they do not understand the spirit world. So starting uh, uh, two lessons ago, we began this series, understanding the spirit world. We have discussed the existence of the spiritual realm, a spiritual world which predates the physical realm, a physical world that we live in. We know about the physical realm, yes. but not many people are familiar with the spiritual realm, although yes. many have heard of it. Yes. In the spiritual realm, there exists God, Satan, and all of the other spirits known as angels. Mm -hmm. Angels, good and bad, and bad yeah. angels are called demons yes. because they are fallen angels. We have seen in previous lessons information in the theme text in Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 12 for this study. We have seen that. Uh, there's information in the Bible and instruction regarding believers contending with or having to fight spiritual forces of evil. Yes. This time, in this lesson tonight, we look at the activity in the spirit realm. The activity. We name the characters, God, Satan, and angels. But what are they doing? Mm -hmm. We're going to begin a three-part look tonight at the activity in the spiritual realm. We're going to look at the activity of God, God the Father, the Holy God. We're going to look at the activity of Satan, the opposer of God, yes. the evil spirit. Yes. And we're going to look at the activity of angels, both good and bad. We've got a lot to talk about that goes on in the spiritual realm, Minister Gwen. That's you a want lot to add of ground anything? to cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to add anything to these opening comments? Uh, well, that it's just important that we as Christians become familiar, have open hearts and minds to become familiar with the spirit world or spiritual realm uh, based on the Bible. There are a lot of things, yes. media included, yes. advertisers, marketeers, right. uh, just people right. that participate mm -hmm. in the spiritual world yes. and in the spiritual realm. Yes. They connect and they introduce us to the spiritual realm all the time. Right. But it is important if you are a Christian to understand what God says and has said to us yes. on how to deal with the spiritual realm. That's excellent. And you know, uh, Minister Gwen, you mentioned that, that a lot of information is out there about the spiritual realm. Yes. Let us say a lot of it's erroneous information. Yes. And what we're looking at in, this, in these studies is what the scriptures have to say. Remember the name of these studies, the name of our entire study and series, all of them. Yes. They are called the biblical perspective. The biblical perspective. The Bible is God's word. Right. So really we're getting God's perspective, God's truth. God's perspective. That's on important. the spirit world. Yes. The devil is not a little red guy with horns. Yes. Uh, and a point on his tail and a pitchfork. Yes. The devil is a formidable, invisible enemy that commands a horde of demons with supernatural powers. And we have to contend with them. We need to understand that. 
God is not remote and untouchable. Yes. God can be accessed by the believer. Yes. He's with the believer. The Holy Spirit is in the believer. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand God. And tonight we're going to talk about what he's doing now. Activity. Activity of God. We'll talk about that tonight. And then uh, 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 the, after we talk about God and then Satan, there will be discussion on the angels and what they are doing. What are the good angels doing? Yes. What are the evil angels doing? Yes. They are all active. There's activity in the spiritual realm. Yes. We look at what's going on in the world today and we think it's all men. Mm. And we don't understand there are spirits behind yes. the men that's doing some of the evil in the world. And by uh, men, you mean humans. Human beings. Yes. There are humans behind a lot of the good going on in the world. Yes, absolutely. So, so spiritual beings are influencing yes. the physical realm. Yes. And we must understand that to really understand what's going on the way we should. Yes. Well, I think that's a pretty good introduction to our the topic tonight. So, Minister Gwen, would you begin telling us tonight about the activity of God in the spiritual realm? Absolutely. God is sustaining the universe that he created. Hmm. We look at Psalm 147.8, and it says, Who, who covers the heavens with clouds, mm -hmm. who provides rain for the earth, yes. who makes grass to grow on the mountains. Wow. And then we take a look at Psalm 8, 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, yes. the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. Right. And then we're looking at Psalms 89, 11 through 12a, which reads, the heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world is and all it contains, you have founded them. Wow. The north and the south, you have created them. Yes. And one other scripture we would look at is Psalm 102, verse 5, that reads, Because of the loudness of my groaning, my bones cling to my flesh. Wow. Well, God created and is sustaining the entire universe. Uh, he sends the rain. Yes. He sends the seasons. Mm -hmm. He has created a climate on this earth that man can habitate uh, comfortably. Yes. He is active in his creation. Yes. Making it work right. Yes. The earth revolves and rotates yes. around the sun, never getting closer, never getting farther away. God has so ordained it. He's in charge yes. of the universe. Minister, thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, the next thing we'll tell you that God is doing, God is providing safe refuge, amen, mm. for refuge. Safe for refuge. For those who belong to him. It's beautiful to be a Christian and know that. Yes. You might not be able to find safety other places, but you can find safety in God. And if God has you in his hand, you're safe no matter what is going on around you. Yes. Let's look at scripture that supports that. Okay. Uh, Psalms 91, verse 1 says, You have been our refuge in every generation. Yes. That reminds me, he doesn't just have us, he had our parents. Yes. He won't just have us, he'll have our offspring. Absolutely. The generations of Israel, the generations of us, those who belong to him. Kind of reminds me of what David said on one occasion. I once was young, but now I'm old. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Yes. Nor their seed begging bread. Yes. So for gener every generation, he is refuge. Yes. Psalm, that's Psalms 90, verse 1. Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2, speaks of the believer and says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. That's speaking of God. I will say to the Lord, the writer says, my refuge and my fortress, a place I can go to and be safe and find shelter. Yes. That is what God is providing for us, refuge and shelter. It goes on to say, my God in whom I trust. 
ministry, it feels good to know we can trust God. It definitely does know, feel good to know that we serve a God yes. that we can really trust. And he's always been there and he'll always be there. He's eternal. He changes not. He is the I am. Amen. Yes. All right. And there's one other thing I want to tell you before I turn it back to Minister Gwen for further explanation is God is right now. Every moment of every hour of every day. Yes. Providing deliverance for his people. Deliverance. In various situations in many lives yes. of his people right now on planet Earth. Yes. yes. He delivers. Yes. Let's read scripture that supports that. Going back to Psalm 91, verse number three says, He himself, I kind of like that, that's double stating. Yes. He himself yes. will deliver you from the hunter's net. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. When Satan tried to trap me, mm -hmm. well, I think one version might say from the foulest snare. Uh -huh. Somebody laying traps, the devil laying traps or people laying traps. He, it says he himself will deliver you yes. from the hunter's nest and from the destructive plague. Yes. Right now while this study is going on, the world is relaxing a little bit. We've been very concerned about the coronavirus. Yes. Before that, we were concerned about SARS. Yes. Before that, we were threatened by AIDS. Right. But every year, we're worried about the flu. Yes. Yes. This says that he protects us yes. from the destructive plague. And I trust yes. that. Yes. I believe that. Yes. That's just an incredible idea that he will provide deliverance mm -hmm. as he always has. Minister, uh, would you take the ne next couple of points on what God does? Okay, continuing about God's activity. Right. God is showing love. Yes. And mercy. Yes. And compassion to everyone in the world, believers and non-believers. Hmm. We find evidence for that in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Yes. Chapter 3, verses 22 through 23 yes which reads because of the lord's faithful love we do not perish for his mercies never end they are new every morning <clears throat> great is your faithfulness minister yes may i pause and talk about that just a little yes all right this this, this passage here in Lamentations. Yes. Uh, let me find it. I lost my I lost my page here. Bear with me just for a moment. Number four. Okay. I will get it. God is showing love, which makes mercy and grace possible. Absolutely. Without his love, we would perish. Yes. So then let's talk about this. He's showing love. You have here, you said mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is not getting punishment that we do deserve. Deserve, yes. Mercy is getting let go of punishment that we should have. All right? Yes. What is grace? Grace is getting benefits and blessings that we do not deserve. Yes. So he is showing compassion to us by giving us grace and mercy now. He's not only showing it to believers, but he's showing it to non-believers alike. Yes. Non-believers need grace. Without grace and mercy, we wouldn't have lived long enough because of sin for salvation to be made possible for us. So we are grateful to God for him showing love and mercy and grace on an ongoing basis to us. I'm sorry. Thank you. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, it's quite all right. Very good comments. Okay. Okay. So we found that the Lord is faithful and yes. he is showing us his mercy and grace because of his love. Yes. Also, God is judging the world and retarding sin mm. by limiting the power and influence of Satan and demons. Wow. And for that, we also are going to look at Psalms 90, 
verse 7, which reads, For we are consumed by your anger, we are terrified by your wrath. And Psalm 75, 2 through 7, When I select an appointed time, it is I who judge with equity. The earth and all who dwell in it melt. It is I who have firmly set its pillars. Hmm. Selah. I said to the boastful, do not boast. And to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on high. Hmm. Do not speak with insolent pride. Wow. For not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the desert comes exaltation. Okay. But God is the judge. Mm. He puts down one and exalts another. Minister, I would like to have some comments on what you just shared. Please. The point yes. is God is judging the world. When God decides a nation is going far enough, he can stop it. Mm -hmm. When God decides that evil in a particular area has gone far enough, he can stop it. Mm -hmm. He retards evil. If he didn't, Satan would overtake the whole world and kill all believers. Mm -hmm. He is protecting believers right now. A clear okay. case of it is God promised Israel protection. Abraham's children would be fine forever. And the little nation Israel is surviving, surrounded by enemies. Absolutely. Israel is still protected by God, and that's a great example of God's promises being kept to those that he loves. I love the idea that he is retarding evil, yes. retarding sin. God only lets Satan go so far, and a lot of people don't understand. Satan can't do anything that God doesn't allow him to do. Mm -hmm. he, Satan is powerful, but God is all powerful, and he puts limits on what Satan can do. Mm -hmm. Satan had to get permission mm -hmm. to inflict Job mm -hmm. with illness, yes. to take Job's property. Yes. But God said, you can do anything, but you can't take his life. Yes. Satan did not have permission to kill Job. If so, he would have killed him uh -huh. because Job honored God. And after Job went through his test, faithful God gave him everything back double. Yes. yes. So God is keeping Satan and sin in check. And that's why we don't need to fear Satan if we trust God. Right. Respect Satan, but don't fear him. Right, right. Okay. Yes. And so God is what you're saying, Pastor, does not allow sin or the effects of sin okay. in this depraved earth yes. to run rampant. No. Without limits. Without it, no. Because he's not limited. God's not limited. Right. And he can stop, change, move. Yes. Anything that he wants to alter, yes, he can enlarge, yes, he can reduce, yes, at any time that he chooses to, All and we trust his choices, yes. I believe there's a scripture that says, "Will not the judge, who is God of all the earth, of all the earth, yes, do what's right?" Oh, he's the judge. We're not the judge, but he's the judge, right? And we're going to see in our next study, getting a little ahead of ourselves, but. Satan uh, is doing a lot of things. He's the God of this age. He's the, he's the God he's, of this world. What Adam was, and Eve did, yeah. turned the earth over to Satan. And he's running it, but God is still in charge. But God is allowing sin to run its course. Yes. With all the angels and demons watching, so that when it's all over, they can see, I wasn't afraid of sin. Sin ran its course, and righteousness won. We read the end of the book in Revelation. We know that God wins, and we win. Mm -hmm. But Satan is running uh, sin is running its course. Yes. But in, in, in that Psalms you read, what it's talking about there, uh, God tells the kings and the nations and the empires, don't get exalted. Yeah. I allowed you to rise. I can bring you down. Yeah. I raise up Thank empires. You. I Thank bring you. down empires. Yeah. Uh, uh, the handwriting on the wall yes. uh, 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 in right. Babylon, yes. God point. said you've gone too far. Mm -hmm. You are desecrating the temple uh, furniture. Mm -hmm. and utensils. You're taking the holy things of God and drinking wine out of them and having an orgy. So God did the handwriting on the wall. You have been weighed in the balance as a nation. And found wanting. And found wanting. Oh, God, like oh man, hallelujah. That's some deep stuff. Yes. 
<laughs> you, 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 you've gone too far. I've watched you babble and do your thing. I watched the golden calf. I humbled Nebuchadnezzar, and y'all know the story, and you still didn't get the message. And now you've desecrated the temple uh, utensils. Mm -hmm. You're having an orgy, and I'm tired of you as a nation. Mm -hmm. So this night, I'm bringing you down. Mm -hmm. And the Medes and the Persians came in and conquered Babylon that very night. So God decides when an empire raises, and he decides when it ends. And sometimes sin goes on so long, we don't think God is in charge. But God is always in charge. God is in charge. Pray to him and trust him and know that in your life, in your family, in the churches that the devil is trying to wreck and in the government, God will only let things go so far and he always judges sin. Right. And I think we're going to get to that, but God doesn't count time and circumstances when they're going to happen when they're going to unfold as we do. No. So we should not take God's grace All right. and mercy Come on. as Christians That's good. for granted. Right. We should not think, well, what's the use? And because well, it's been a while. Why should, yes, because we don't see any judgment. Right. We say God is judging. Yes. But oftentimes we, with our literal eyes, yes. we don't recognize good. judgment. Very good, Minister. And so that sometimes tends to make us uh, weaker and less uh, committed than we should be as That's Christians. Good. That's good. But you should not waver in your faith yes. because God always sees what you are doing, what he knows what you are thinking, and don't give room to the devil. Right. Don't let him fool you. Don't let him speak to you in a deceitful manner with deceitful language like he did to eat. Has God not said, or is this what he really means? Right. Or is he going to really be judging like those people up there right. on that platform said? Right. So don't let Satan cast doubt in your mind right. about what God is doing. Just trust that God is doing what he's doing. You said <laughs> uh, something I want to amplify a little. You said God is not looking at time and judging time the way we do. God lives outside time. Right. God is looking at the beginning of the empire and the end of an empire at the same time. At the same God time. right now is in all space and time uh, from the beginning until the end of the created universe and mm -hmm. sees all and is everywhere at the same time watching all and overseeing all. That's, that concept is too hard for us to even understand. But, but the, the thing is God is in charge mm -hmm. and he is in, everything is kept in check whatever he wants it brought in check. And nothing goes any further than he wants it to go. No nation, no king, no man, no people goes any further than God wants them to go. Mm -hmm. And God, the Bible says, I was trying to get to, uh, uh, I think it was Peter that said, uh, a thousand years is like a, 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 day. a day to God, and a day is like a thousand years. Mm -hmm. In other words, there is no time with God. Yeah. Time is something he created for us to measure events by. He created for us. For us, God doesn't need time. God operates outside of time. That's the point I wanted to end with. Yes, okay, Pastor. Minister. And you know, I have to say, for me in my Christian life, being a young woman and now a more mature woman, especially in the things of God, um, he gave me and gives me great comfort yes. when God says, his ways are not my ways. Right. And he says in the word that his thoughts are not my thoughts. Wow. So wh wherever my thoughts have a tendency to go. Yes that's not like God, yes. I can't use my reason no, no. To, to figure out what God is doing and why is he doing or not doing. It doesn't trust. work. We have to trust God. Right. We trust him. Yes. Our walk with God is by faith. It's by faith and not by what we can see. We have to believe what he said and know that what he said is going to be like he said. That's right. When he decides it's time. When, well, that scripture that we looked at says, when I select an appointed time. Wow. He selects the time. He selects the time. And, but he, he does judge. Yes. He selects the time. He does elevate. Yes. And it's all in his time. We sing a song here called In Your Time. Yes. You make all things beautiful in your time. Yes. All right, Minister. Well, let's see here. The next point that I want to talk about, here's something else God is doing right now. He is forgiving, mm. cleansing, and restoring believers who will confess they've been wrong and repent. Wow. 
First John 1 9, Lord, thank you for this truth of this verse. <laughs> Everybody needs this verse. It says, if we confess our sins, yes. he, God, is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is nothing he can't fix in our lives if we confess and repent. Wow. Makes me want to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's all right. Activity. Not only is he forgiving yes. and cleansing and restoring believers, but yes. he is still saving all sinners who will repent and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Yes. The classic salvation scripture is Romans 10, 9 and 10, that says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord yes. and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes. For with the, the heart a person believe, it's, it's about faith resulting in righteousness mm. and with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation Beautiful. so he's forgiving this the sinners the saints and cleansing them he's forgiving the sinners and saving them right. that's a couple of good things that god is doing today yes every day somebody got cleansed today a believer yes. somebody got saved today yes. a non-believer yes. amen for god Amen. Minister, uh, uh, would you take the next couple of points? Okay. Uh, Pastor, I think it's important that you, Romans ten thirteen says, whoever will call on. Ah. So God makes his salvation available to anyone. Whoever will call. And everyone. And calling is prayer. And calling is prayer, which is the point we're going to make okay. in just a moment. All right. Uh, but it says, whoever Whoever, God does not discriminate. That's beautiful, minister. You know, he doesn't yes. have any partial people. Wait, wait. What about the people that say, I've done so much wrong, he doesn't, he's not going to save me. He can't forgive me for all that. Yes. Are they in the whoever? They're in the whoever. All they have to do is say, Lord, save me. I believe. Whoever can believe, God can save. So all it takes is faith for the worst of sinners. For the worst of sinners. Paul had killed Christians. Right. That's why he said, I'm the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church. Right. So if he can save Paul, a murderer. Yeah. He can save anybody. Yeah. Peter really was a murderer. The guy just ducked and he, Peter missed his head and got the guy's ear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if Peter can get filled with the spirit and go preaching and write first Peter and second Peter, we got a shot, right? There's a chance for us. <laughs> we have a shot. I'm yeah. glad I have a chance, minister. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So. One of other activity, we've kind of hinted on this one. We said God is delaying judgment. Yes. Uh, on a sinful world in order to allow time for the lost to repent. Wow. And be saved. Allowing that, time. That gives purpose. Allowing time. Allowing time. Holding back judgment. Yes. Yes. Wow. So speaking of that, we read 2 Peter 3, 9 in the New International Version of the Bible says, The Lord is not slow mm. in keeping his promise, no. as some understand slowness. Right. Instead, he is patient with you. He's yes. a very patient God. Yes, yes. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Excellent. And then another activity yes. that God is doing is answering prayers for those who humble themselves mm. and submit to his will, mm. obey his commands, and serve his kingdom. Uh, Minister, hold on. You said a lot. May I? It's a lot in there in that statement. He is answering prayers, but only for certain people with certain attitudes. Mm-hmm. And uh, you said they first got to humble themselves. Yeah, they have to humble and themselves. Prayer, yes, prayer before says God. I'm humble enough to come ask. There you go. Yes. It kind of reminds me of the scripture: If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Yes. Second Chronicles seven, 7 fourteen. Seven fourteen. Yes. All right. So you said they got to humble themselves, mm -hmm. submit to His will. Mm -hmm. Lord, Your way is right. Mm -hmm. Obey His commands. Lord, I'm not perfect yet, but help me do it the way you want it done. Yeah, you're reading his word and you're trying to follow it. 
thank you for that. That's what obeying his commands are. And then when you find out what you're supposed to be doing, serve it, serve in the kingdom. And then serving the kingdom. I just wanted to amplify a little. Forgive the interruption. I hope it was okay. It's okay, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, John 15, 7 yes. uh, supports this Come on. idea saying, if you abide, yes. meaning you and me or anyone that believes, if you abide in me, and abide. that means to continue. Come on. And my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Ooh, that's rich. And you know, Pastor, I really have to say, <laughs> as a young Christian, yes, I used to say, Lord, why is that verse in the Bible that way? Mm. That really makes it hard to explain because mm -mm. when you tell people they can ask whatever they wish, mm -mm. they go off on tangents and, yes. and, and they don't see any limitations. Mm -mm. But if you are reading the word of the God, of the, mm -hmm. the word of God, mm -hmm and you understanding the unfolding yes. of his word, you know that you don't just ask for anything right. arbitrary right. Right. that's right. outside of God's will. And there are other scriptures that teach that. Yes. So yes. you have to interpret scriptures with scripture right. so that you understand that what you are asking, the whatever, must be in compliance with his will. Minister, you explained it but I just want to say it another way because this point is so important. Important. And in a certain movement in the church where people want to name and claim things. Okay. And, and, and think they have all of this power they really don't have without understanding what the requirements are. I want to amplify these words. If you abide in me, you said that, mm -hmm. a consistent Christian life. Yes. And my words abide in you. Yes. Now that's the key phrase. Mm -hmm. If you are full of the word of God, you're full of knowledge of God, you know what God has said in his word. Yes, his command. You can pray. He wants everybody saved. So, Lord, save my brother. That's a good prayer. Right. Lord, I want that house there and I want it by Christmas. That's not in the word that you can do that. That right. might not be his will for you. Mm -hmm. But you will know that there are some things you could pr should pray if it be thy will. Mm -hmm. And that's taught in scripture and you alluded to it. Mm -hmm. But there are so many people that don't get the part, if and my words abide in you. You said it, I'm just saying another way. You'll know not to ask for certain things a certain way, not knowing whether it's God's will without praying, if it be thy will. Right. Because that is the key right there. My words abide in you, you'll have knowledge of what to ask and how to ask. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but see, that's where humility comes in yes a and uh sometimes you know we get on a tangent and we get rolling and we forget the humility part yes uh, when we see something we want yes but you know god gives us guidelines on uh how can i say material things right and um he has provided ways in his word that you obtain material things yes that a lot of things that we pray for, we really don't have to pray for. That's good. You really don't have to pray for. You just, I mean, <laughs> if you want to live a certain way, then you're going to have to do things to prepare yourself so you can live that way. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And so uh, God gives you the ability to earn. To get wealth. Wealth. Yes. Okay. And so it, you can make some decisions on what wealth uh, what level of wealth you want to be in. Yeah, and that depends on your, Some, sometime, your, your you preparation. Know, your preparation. And what you do to acquire it. And then also what you do to manage it when you get it. Right. A lot of that. And, and then another thing is some blessings you say are just, they come along with living right. And some, he said some right. blessing will overtake you just because of obedience. And this is true. This is really you know, true. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his it's righteousness. The kingdom of God. And these things will be added. A lot of people don't even pray about material things. They just live right and they come. And a lot of people don't wait for God to add. Yeah. Don't wait for God to add anything. Okay. Uh -huh. You just go on after it yourself and you keep yeah. going after more yeah. <laughs> and more and more. And the, you leave God out of the process. Who don't tithe and trying to go on a cruise and save in that tithing money. And, and they uh, have, might have trouble serving too. And, and they might, <laughs> they, can't, they can't serve if they're working two jobs and not coming to church. <laughs> right. So. But that's another lesson for another day. We're getting off track. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
Go ahead, Minister. The I, biblical I'm sorry, track. I'm being pastoral and I shouldn't be. Okay. So <laughs> I think that we have adequately um, taught on the whatever you wish. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's where we that's we're going. That's the point that we're making that Very was good. important. Thank okay. you for the clarity. So another thing, God is providing rescue mm. and abundant blessings, which is what we're talking about, to those who are faithful to him. He's doing that now, minister? Doing it. That's one of his activities that he's doing now. Well, what did you say he's doing? Rescue. Rescue. And abundant blessings. Abundant blessings. Right now. Yes. To some of his people. Right. I, and, I want some of that. Yes. And, and I remember <laughs> the scripture that says, Satan, the opposer, the enemy yes. of the brethren, yes. says he comes to steal, uh -huh. kill, yes. and destroy. St. John 10. St. John 10, I believe, Yes, 10. it is. That's 10. John 10. But I came. Come on, teach. Come on, minister. To give you life. And how? What, what kind of life? And more abundantly. And I love mm. for God to just bless me abundantly for things I don't even have to labor for. Yeah. Well, that, that, somebody that's, said, "Amen." Yeah, amen. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you, staff. Uh, uh, that, that a blessing. Yes. My name is definition. Okay, and I've given on. it before of a blessing. Yes. Is getting more than you expected with less effort than you thought you'd have to expend. More than you expected with, less, with effort less effort than you thought you'd have to spend. Than you thought you'd have to spend. Wow. That's a good that's good stuff right there. Well, I love serving God and let him do the blessings the way he wants to bless. It's always good. You like the kind of blessings minister that overtake you? That overtake you. While you serving him. While I All serve right. him. That's and good he's stuff. faithful to do it. <laughs> so uh, we right. look at Psalm 91 again. Verse 15, which says, he will call upon me Come on. and I will answer him. Yes. And I will be with him in trouble. Yes. I will rescue him and honor him. He's Whoa. talking about his people. Rescue and honor? Yes. Those that love him, he will rescue. Rescue and honor. I and he will honor. He will elevate you. He will have men to recognize you. He, he will have men really not to worship you, but to bow down in honor of your being there representing God. Excellent, Minister. Yes. Minister, well, uh, let's see. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> I have, uh, uh, can I have uh, the next point? Please take the next point. Okay. Yes. Every day, God shows great love and compassion to everybody on the planet. Yes, everybody. First Timothy 1, 14 and 15, the Apostle Paul talks about the abundance of God's love, grace, and mercy. Yes. He says in 1 Timothy 14, 1, 14 and 15, Paul says, and the grace, that's the un unmerited kindness of favor, mm -hmm. the grace of our Lord was more than abundant. Wow, there's that word abundant again. More than abundant. More than abundant. With the faith and love which are found in Jesus Christ. It is a trustworthy saying, statement rather, deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul ends it by saying, among whom I am foremost of all. Mm. Paul says I was the worst kind of sinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he showed me great love and compassion. Mm -hmm. So it's available to everybody. To everyone, everyone. <clears throat> That's what we want to share with you tonight. Some of what God is doing in the limited time that we've had. Yeah. In, in conclusion, let's say this. God is the all-powerful, all-knowing, loving, holy, and immutable creator and ruler of the entire universe. He is Lord and ruler of everything in both the spiritual realm and the physical realm. Those who know him, obey him, trust him, can be secure regarding his protection of them and his provision for them. Yes. And I'm glad to say that I'm one of them today. Yes, amen. Uh, my closing remarks are, please join us next time as we continue to look at activity in the spiritual realm. Minister Gwen, what do you want to say as we end? Oh, this is just a rich study. Please invite someone to watch it with you. We'll see you next time. Amen. 
Emmanuel Community Church is located at 12607 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Hawthorne, California. You can find all of our messages on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and thanks for watching. Be blessed for God is with us.